I, I'm not sure if I can actually, if, if I should be talking um, or somebody else at all. Uh, it should be me who is talking. It's a, a violent thing also to open, to make a condition that come people to come your discourse into something else. That's a, that's a violent and difficult thing. It also does not nothing uh, so I want to continue from yesterday's uh, talk, if you were there, uh, where we ended with the first point for the facts and putting uh, his pause into the, into the fact that was supposedly creating this hard sound in, in, the, in the forest, but it was only fat for him. And uh, before going, uh, I want to open another angle towards that story of the fox uh, and the sound, uh, which is about the animal calf. Because um, at the same time that the fox goes to find the source of the horror, we don't know if it could be a trap set up only for him, and not any, anybody else. So he is also going for that one. But before that, uh, I also want to um, set up a kind of a position for myself. Um, there are like two, two things that I like. Uh, I, want, I want to like hang on to them. One is that uh, as much as that you or Sina wants to try to say something, there is also something that also trying to say you or to say Sina. You know what I mean? So you are as if you're trying to articulate something with your or organs. Uh, there's also other things that are articulating you. And this is also a position that I would like to talk from. And also that open, an, op an opening regarding the practices of remembering today. And I, and, I, and I believe that everything depends on the way we remember. I'm going to talk about it. And other than that, um, it's going to be just stories of foxes. And But I'm going to also this time go for a kind of fish story. So, so back, 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 back to the back to the possibility of the fact for the fox as an animal trap. Um, traps are games of perception in this case. There are little lures made fit your perception, and there are a guess of somebody else. How might the world look like from your eyes, specifically? And there are awesome, I, I think. And we are constantly in the games of trap making. But the fox, uh, what the, what the, the mistake of the fox is that he doesn't fall into it, I would say. I'm also in another creature, the octopus, who is much better at, uh, at, at falling into lures. And because um, the octopus, unlike fox, becomes lured into desiring and also into trusting the trap, which I'm very much interested in. In this case, uh, I will I will bring an evil octopus. Sorry if if the but uh, I would say the story that one uh, is growing up with. So I'm very much also interested in the in the sea witch and the evil itself. I love evil. I, I, I don't know about it. I believe in evil. It is awesome. As the opposite of a godly purity, maybe, which also used to be category crossing monsters. Also, a force of liberation, beauty, and complexity, I would say. So, um, I would love to hear your take on evil, which are things that we can talk about it. But what I'm taking evil, unless it's too evil, which is super scary, but uh, in some of those, I, I, would, I think we have, uh, we, I, would, I would put my cards there. And uh, back to the idea of fox going to the trap, the game of perception. I like to make perception also a new So, and also be skilled in different modes of perception, even not per perceiving. It's also super important. Rhetorical perception could be a thing, the inner or visual um, perception and uh, also having a taste for the ring and stuff perception. Uh, I've also opened those, that kind of game that uh, your ability to be caught into, into an assemblage uh, accidentally or purposefully uh, made by somebody else. 
it's also something that also yesterday we talked about how um, how little monsters are are the one who are building the world. Uh, I, I won't I won't open up today. So there is extremely important and interesting things about the trap in the fox story. Because when the fox sees all the animals escaping in one type of direction, he goes, he goes towards the opposite, uh, opposite to find out what is the source of this hard and sound that everybody escaped. So the traps are also about nearness and the, and the bodily proximity to, to them. When you're caught in one, you, you become a body fully engaged. Into, into, into something that's also a game of will. What does it want from me? I resist or not. So it's also a game of perspective. If you look at it on the right way, you're fully fabulous into something extremely interesting. Or not, or not. Um, this also reveals the fox relationship to the forest, okay? So it's not an abstract relationship, it's a material and a physical one. It's embodied one is also based on not trusting the self or not trusting the signs or the potent signs that, that an animal is uh, um, It's also a very important thing for the fisher uh, to know what the fish loves in this case that we will also cut into. It. Back to evil, I think I want to open a kind of a, 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 a beautiful um, sound performed by, uh, what is her name? I don't remember, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Orzola in the Little Mermaid. Uh, and I'm very much interested in the sea witch, the Orzola. You know the Little Mermaid? Sorry for the reference. But uh, it's okay. But I, I think that the, there is something fundamentally interesting about Orzola. The, the way she laughs. There's a kind of an unhinging, mad, almost, almost um, crazy laughter that is coming from her stomach, as if she cannot stop it. And I would say, Orzola's evil laughter is, from, is an affect of encounter with the morality of the fish, where the fish want to be human. And she laughs. And it's a kind of a joy of the possibility of corrupting her which she fades according to his name. The fish manages to become human and kills the, kills the witch. So behind, behind her, Ariel destroys the cosmology of the ocean. We can also argue that it has the cost of becoming human for her. It's another conversation, I love to have it with you. There is also, in, uh, in, in Orzola's laughter, there's also, I also hear that sounds like a yes. So saying yes, can you turn me to, she said yes, yes I can, and I can do more. So it's a more, 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 and yes, 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 yes. And I love this because uh, I think also we need uh, this kind of, um, the, this large, fabulous set of context. You think we should just say yes, 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 I want more of this, yes. Because also last time we are saying no, the concept of the is to stop the, that we have to say no. Like, stop this shit, no resistance, and also very conscious interest in those countries in which yes. I'm building a department for the Bambi's mother studies. If you know Bambi, the very famous uh, I'm very sorry for going back to this ice cream <laughs> The death of the Bambi's mother is the is the touchstone of this kind of critical point of thing that you are that you are screwed into falling into her death as this part of the lure of the film. It's also one of those things I would also uh, approach like a fox is like by that, I'm talking about what happens inside a landscape. What are the stories that are silenced by that specific death report, the death of the band? Absolutely hard. It's a traumatizing scene if you have seen it. And I would also ask uh, what else was going on in the forest? What the snakes or the, or the bear was doing that actually was also interesting. Who cares about Bambi's? I don't know. But it's also, I'm also talking about the politics of remembrance. What are the apparatuses of attention, reconstruction, and storytelling installed by who for you to remember certain kind of things and also forget other things? 
family's mother said it on the same time. So to get in the politics of remembering. The yeah, architectural graffiti are uh, also part of the story things of uh, how it built, installed for you. That they do the remembering. And thanks to God, remembering in, in English has also a nasty twist in it. I don't know, it doesn't have any fancy, I don't know about other languages. It's coming from the re and the member, like bringing back, back the, the lost member. You have lost your member. Also, member in English is the penis. So there's also an extremely violent phallic uh, function going on at remembering. Like, maybe you didn't need that member, and who wants to bring that member on, on you? Or maybe I'm completely wrong, and, and the act of remembering is totally about something else. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I would like to uh, fast forward to another Orzola. Uh, Leguin, um, and um, she has this um, fabulous uh, horror story. And by the way, these were all horror stories. I don't know, uh, the stories I don't remember from where it come from, but uh, it's a short form story within the three different stories. Sorry. And it's it's the story that tells a poor fisherman, not a rich fisherman. Okay, I don't know, it's a very constant. I mean, in where I come from, fishermen are usually poor. So the poor fisherman, uh, his name is uh, Orashima. Have you heard this story? Good. Who went out daily in his boat alone on the quiet sea that lay between his home island and the mainland. He was a beautiful young man with long and black hair and the daughter of the king of the sea, let's say Ariel. Okay. Saw him as he leaned over the side of the boat, and she gazed upon, upon to see the floating shadow cross the wide circle of the sky. Rising from the waves, she begged him to come to her palace under the sea with him. At first, he refused, saying, uh, my children wait for me at the home. So he's married, actually. Um, but how could he resist the sea king's daughter? You know how she sings also. Absolutely amazing. One night, only one night, he, he said. So she drew him down with her under the water and they spent a night of love in her green palace, served by strange undersea beings. Urashima came to love her dearly and maybe he stayed more than one night. Okay. But at last he says, my dear, I must go. My children wait for me at home. And then she says, uh, Ariel, if you go, you go forever. But I will come back. He promised. I will definitely come back. I'm just gonna. I, I don't know how how is that gonna do. Just say goodbye to his children and come back to this. I don't know. Anyway, she shook her head. She grieved, but did not plead him. Take this with you, and she gave her. She gave him a little box, uh, wonderfully carved and sealed shut. Do not open it. So he went up onto the land and ran up the shore to his village, to his house. But the garden was a wilderness. The windows were blank. The roof had fallen in. People came and went among the familiar houses of the village, but he did not know a single face. Where are my children? He cried. An old woman stopped and spoke to him. What is your trouble, young stranger? I'm Orashima of this village, but I see no one here I know. Orashima, the woman said, my grandfather told me a fisherman named Orashima was lost at the sea. In the time of his grandfather's grandfather, there has been no one of that family alive for a hundred years. So Orashima went back down to the shore, and there he opened the box, the gift of the sea king's daughter. A little white smoke came out of it and drifted away to the sea wind. In that moment, Orishima's beautiful black hair turned white, and he grew old, 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 and he lay down on the sand and died. <laughs> I can't do or so less even after, sorry. Okay, let's go to the other room um, and continue the story in another room. Uh, follow me. Please.
if you need a chair, grab a chair or a blanket. Um, and, and come.